All right, so they're coming up and starting to blow past you. You hit the red button. You jerk back into your seat as your nitrous hits. And you're able to keep pace with them. So Father and Loki are returning to Jotunheim as the the base of operations will now and forevermore be called. Father, thank you so much for carrying all, all that stuff. I know those boxes of ready-to-eat meals must be very heavy. Yeah, they're a little... Hey, Loki. Hmm. Uh, what's that? I'm just going to point up towards the floating. I don't know. What is that? Um, Flounder's going to like duck down behind Loki. Like, try and make himself as small Looks as possible. Look smaller. <laughs> All right. It's just uh, something floating in the air. Uh, would I know what it is? I mean, yeah. You see drones all over downtown all the time. Okay, so it's a drone. Yeah. Weird that you have one all the way out here and it's hovering over your your encampment. Um how far away is it like is it like right over us or is it like a couple blocks away or what? It's like half a block away. Okay, so but I, it's I high up in the air. Okay, so it could be it could be looking at anything at this point. Could be. It's just you haven't <laughs> seen one in this area before mm. he calls zero my hands are full um yes let's uh let's go this way chum uh, is there like an alley we can duck into to get out of line of sight of this thing yeah sure we're just like just be calm walk slowly like you just normal you don't see it you don't see a thing or you I'm like just walk Ooh. into your encampment area and no i don't want to do that okay I'm like low long leg lunging it behind him all right. Just act normal. Stop doing that thing you're doing right now. Just that's just act normal. Um. And uh, you, you want to you want to call zero? You want to you want to call him? Don't don't mention anything over the phone. Just uh, tell him to. My hands are full. Put the you boxes down. It's very simple. What this if we is... have to run? The boxes aren't going to stop you from using your legs, chum. Uh, I could throw one of the boxes. Oh, my God. Just put the boxes down and call, call zero. Fine. Put the boxes down and call zero. Zero, okay. your phone rings. Interior shot. Granny's apartment. There are uh, microwavable meat pie uh, wrappers everywhere. There's a box or two of Taco Temple. And there's a mountain of it. Out there's a ringing that's coming from inside, and a hand shoots out. And then I crawl out of the pile. And I'm just like, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, hello. Hey, buddy. Um, southeast side of the camp, about two alleyways down. You want to discreetly make your way down here. I uh, I need you for something, and. Uh, Bring your rifle, please. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'm coming right out after I microwave a meat pie. Be right uh, out. No, quickly, quickly. Okay, okay. Quickly, but s- quietly, but sneakily. Yes. But swiftly. Like a, Got it. Like a, uh, a, a rat on payday. Uh-huh. Uh, the rats. Oh, okay. I'm on my way. Gotcha. I turn on my predator cloaking and I have my rifle. And I'm doing I'm doing a sneak. Alright, roll me a sneak. Alright, so fifteen. Um Flounder and Loki, you can make perception rolls if you want. I'm good. Okay. Sure. Uh, I'm happy to make a perception intelligence roll. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Uh, 
Zero, you are able to successfully sneak up on both your teammates without them even suspecting that you're there. Okay. Um, I <laughs> In front of Loki, I kneel. My Joseph! As soon as it happens, I'm going to pull my gun. Lone Star! Oh, it's just you. It's just you, huh? Wait, so now you? <sighs> I can sneak up on you guys. Back in the Taco Ooh. Temple, nah. Right here. Oh, what, what, what's going on? Okay. Look, look uh, up and to the right. Yeah, like around this corner right here. Like, don't do not do anything. I, you have, like, those those magna eyes, right? Sure do. Can you, can you see what that thing is over there? Like, look up in the sky. Is it a bird? Right. Is it a plane? Is it an Ares drone? I don't know. It's a very specific list. I will, is it, I will is lean it, out. Is it Power Man? Is it Power Man? The 5,000 uh, If it's anything, okay. it's, it's old Power Man. <laughs> wow. I am, I'm doing the one, one eye. Okay. So uh, you peek around the corner in the direction that they're telling you, and you look up, and you can see a blimp drone is just oh. kind of moseying along around the area. It's making very slow, deliberate circles. Um, is a blimp drone like the size of a blimp? No, no. Uh, a blimp drone, think of it... Um, well, a blimp drone like, is the size of a blimp, but it's not the size of a Zeppelin. <laughs> think of it model airplane size, you know, the, okay, uh, like, gotcha. the electric uh, model airplanes that you can, can use. I, can I see any details on it? Uh, it doesn't look like it has any logos on it or anything. Okay. It looks like a blimp drone, and it's making very slow circles. Do you see any cameras or anything like that on it? Microphones? Anything to give away what its purpose might be? Yeah, can I tell what its purpose is? Uh, with your magnification, uh, you can roll me perception to see what you okay. can see on it. Perception. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So it'd be linked to your intelligence. So roll your intelligence, nice. and your target number is with magnification. Your target number is four. Four. Nice. Um, three successes. You can tell that it doesn't look like it has any kind of listening devices, like microphones or anything, but it does have optical cameras on it. It seems to be solely for video recording. It doesn't seem like it can record in the audio, so hey, we have that going for us, I guess. Hmm. Well, I really don't want my face on the evening news. How about you, fellas? Eh. Not really. That. Well, uh, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about about this this event. I don't know who would possibly have an interest in here, and I, you know, perhaps the corporation that had previously taken an interest in in I guess securing this area through the gang means that we have been successfully. Great job, by the way, everybody. Uh, cleaning up. We're cleaning up the streets, just like the the Wild West, and I'm the sheriff. I'm like a regular wild herb in the barrens. Uh, but it, okay, anyway, you're getting a little high in your supply there. I digress. Yeah. I digress. My apologies. My apologies. Again. Question: Can you can you do your like face melty thing on other people? Well, I I can, but it would it would be very painful for you. That seems like a reference to something. <laughs> it's, it's from an old trid that I 100% uh, I enjoyed at the time, but looking back yeah. on it was kind of okay at best. Back at the time. And, and, and uh, Zero like hones in on like if, if that movie came out that whatever year ago and he watched it back in that day, he's freaking ancient. Um, but I don't say any of that. I'm just like, okay, so uh, what do you, you want to do? Like, I think that what we should do is we should just let it run its course and not do anything. I think shooting it down would... Do they make gel rounds for his sniper rifle? Well, I'm sure they do. Here's the problem, though. Oh. If we shoot this thing down, mm -hmm. that simply is a cause for, I guess, retrieval, or they know that something is going on here. Currently... All they can really see is that it's a camp for the homeless. It's where the homeless people have been gathering. Other than that, 
can we like fashion around out of some bird poop and shoot it at the camera? No, uh, I think that would probably damage in the process. I have a question though. Um, your your friend Apple Jacks, you think that he could have some kind of hardware that help us maneuver through this situation? Well, oh, okay. Here's here's the uh, here's my thoughts on. Uh, yes. there, as far as I know, there there are ways that you can uh, use some kind of electronic countermeasure uh, in order to disrupt signals, you know, uh, going from A to B so that whoever's controlling it, if it's a rigger or some other kind of, uh, you know, person behind the, uh, the scenes running this drone, uh, there's a way that you can disrupt the signal from one to the other, um, in which case... I believe the drone will go back to its default programming. I don't know what that is. Probably just return home. Um, however, it would still alert whoever is behind it that there is something here. And what we don't want is for anybody thinking that there is something here other than a whole bunch of homeless people. So are you saying that we should just proceed without even acknowledging it. I think we should just leave it alone. Everybody throw a dirty blanket over your head and act like you blend in. Just, you belong here. You are one of the unwashed masses. Mm. As, as much as I hate to stoop to that level, these are my people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had time to ask this, mm. but because they are your people mm. and we're like your people, like, did we ever discuss like a group name? I feel like we're just a bunch of hooligans in in Jotunheim, but we we don't got like an identity, you know? Oh, you mean like that uh that old trid show that I I used to I used to watch all the time um the B team. That the was that was a great B one team. with um uh -huh. uh yeah they had uh they had Mr B and uh, Cannibal and uh they had Whoa. Spaceman. And uh, who, was, who was the other guy? Uh, it was Burdock Group. That's right. That's, That's right. hardcore. Yeah, no, it was great. It was great. They they did all kinds of jobs, and they had a really cool van, and they had like smoke smoke like effects and oil slicks coming out the back. And it was it was very cool. Was, I should have to show you that sometime. You'd really was so that us? Well, I mean, I'm saying this. That's what you're talking about, right? Oh yeah 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 yeah. I just think it'd be good for morale, you know, help to build a brand, you know, even though we're kind of low key about it like we could form an identity as a group and then kind of go from there you know hmm. just something to think about but as it stands right now i think simply ignoring the drones drones drone um not drawing more attention to ourselves is probably the best play huh? i think so i mean camouflage only works if you don't shoot your gun you understand my oh. military reference, right? You're just saying don't shoot it. Yeah, just like it, you know, if you don't bring attention to yourself, that's how your mm -hmm. camouflage works. But if you're in a camouflage outfit and you're jumping up and down with two flares waving them, like, hey, I'm over here, it's not going to do you very much good. So that sounds very counterintuitive to stealth. Right. So maybe we should just blend in and let them do what they're doing, and then we can deal with that problem. A little bit later. I'm I'm mostly worried about completing this job and maybe getting paid. I, we haven't seen any new yet. Yeah. In how long? Well, and speaking of dealing with another problem, um, where's Kaze at? I think it's time to race. That's a good question. Uh, I I tell you what, we have all these uh, these two cases of ready to eat meals, and I have these uh, these showers and things like that. I, I have these solar showers so that we can all like get clean and wash up and have soap and you know other sundries that I have brought back to help everybody, you know, improve their hygiene. Um, Cause I've noticed the, the smell has gotten sort of, I don't know, old milky around here, you know? Uh, so yeah. I don't, mm, mm -mm. Yeah. okay. Understood. Yeah. We were in a sewer a couple of times as well. I haven't had a shower in like a week. A week. I feel very gross right now. I don't know canonically how long it's been since Zero showered or if he's had access to a shower in all our journeys. I, I like to think that uh, on your little side mission that you did, the mm. first thing that you did was go shower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, it could, it could be. 
Your, your programming just forces you to go shower. Uh, 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 of all of us, am I the only person that has an apartment? I ju- I'm just wondering. Amazing, amazing Did anyone has an of aging has an apartment too? Okay, yeah. I was just wondering. It's it's I, just you two though. Listen, I don't have an apartment because my okay. whole thing is like, if I need somewhere to stay, I can either get a coffin motel or I could just go sweet talk a lady. Right, to, no. you know, taking me home, you know what I mean? I, I, I understand for you, I guess, just yeah. with Zero and Flounder, I never really, like, I don't think we'd ever gotten into it. As well, I'm a homeless there. dwarf with a gun. Okay, I, have a, that's I have a place to go, but yeah. it's not an apartment. Gotcha, yeah. okay. He said I'm a homeless dwarf with a gun. <laughs> don't look down at me from your ivory tower, okay? <laughs> that reminds me of another trid that I watched once upon a time called... Look at Kaze. Hey, where's he at? <laughs> called Bobo with a Shotgun. It was about a clown that uh, was uh, like a train hopper, and then he gets off, and then... That's ridiculous. Oh, it was, it was amazing. It was fantastic. A clown with a gun, yes. huh? It was crazy. You're saying I'm a clown with a gun? That's why you're getting... No, no, no. It just, you just you remind me of, you know, never mind. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we smash cut to Kaze? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kaze, your phone finally goes off after they have this lovely discussion about... 50-year-old trend video. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, h- h- hello? Who's calling me, by the way? Who's this? <laughs> Kaze, it's Loki. How are you, buddy? Good. How's it going, Loki? I don't know why I'm using Zero's phone. It's really weird. But uh, we, we were wondering uh, if if you uh, were interested in uh, in taking care of that uh, that neon thing. Remember that that whole thing with the bright lights and the motorcycles yeah yeah i've actually just been finishing up work with sam we should have uh everything ready to go on that end and i've actually uh been working on a small side project for us Ooh. here so if you Ooh. could get everybody together do you do you, do you remember where sam's shop is sam's bar do you, oh do i do where? i do sam and i are fast friends at this point what a what a great guy he's such a stand-up fella like tell him i said thank you for everything by the way We'll, we'll do. I'll, I'll make sure to pass that along. Uh, but yeah, give me like an hour and then uh, meet me there and uh, I should be there ready to go with everything. Sure, sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so then I will uh, as as I hang up, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at my workstation and I'm, I'm putting together uh, a collection of jackets for us for the rides tonight to have everything uh, that I will go into more detail once we all get together. But okay. okay. I'm making sure that we're, we're ready for, for, for the, <laughs> this for, the for the inevitable. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> for and, the then, festivities. and then I'll get that all packed up and then I'll, I'll head over to Sam so I can meet everybody. In the meantime, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call one of my lieutenants over from the out. Psst, hey, come here. We we need some some like dirty blankets, something we can cover up with. Can you find us something like that quickly? He grabs a blanket off the ground. Perfect. I need like two more of those. Three more of those. He gestures around the camp. <laughs> and uh, is there, does anybody have a shopping cart I can borrow for like five minutes? Again, gestures around. Okay. The camp. So I'm gonna grab a shopping cart and some blankets. I'll throw one to zero, one to flounder. Here, cover up with these, and I'll put all the stuff in the shopping cart and put another blanket over it, and like throw some trash in there and make it look all like messed up. You know, blanket like I'm barely. Just... Yeah, the blanket barely covers me, so I grab a nearby tarp. Perfect. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, like sure. dude, like shower curtain, wrap that around you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we need to go meet with uh, with Kaze over at Sam's, but I think uh, we these disguises will be perfect. We're completely incognito, practically invisible right now. So yep. I'm I'm like getting into method acting. I'm like they're putting something in the water, man. Is the wiring us into the system, man. Is this working? It's working fantastically. Keep it up. I, I'm like Don't getting stop. lost in this. Don't Do stop you what you're to... doing. You're doing so good. Do you want Whoa. me to drop the boxes off somewhere? I have, I have the boxes in the cart, in a shopping oh. cart. Gotcha. Like I, have, I have all the stuff in a shopping cart. I'm gonna take it up to Granny's. Okay. You're gonna drop off your newfound supplies. Yeah, just take it up to Granny's and be like, Granny, hang on to these for us. We'll be back. 
towards everything into uh, the living room where you guys have kind of taken over. I take the next 20 to 30 minutes cleaning up all the trash. <laughs> so much trash. In here. So many wrappers. You crawled out of a box of I, it was refried so food. What oh, happened that's in what here? I forgot Did to it? get her. Oh, I should have. <clears> I should have <throat> got her a different thing. I'm gonna have to go back to that mall. Easy mode. Why? So that I can get her some propane and a propane camp stove. Oh my god. Because she said her stove was broken. <laughs> I need to. We need to buy a propane and propane accessories. That, look, that is the least that I can do for this sweet old lady that's let us like live in her place for whatever reason. Well, are you going to make your way back to the mall, or are you going to go? No, we're going to go garage? deal with we're going to go deal with the the Kaze thing. Okay, we'll so just we're going yeah. table your yeah. needing to buy camping supplies. I will. I will do that another time. Okay. How are you uh, making your way to Sam's? Well, he said about an hour. It'll probably take us about an hour to walk there, right? Thereabouts. Why don't we just hoof it, boys? Okay. Is there a gun shop at the mall? There could be. The Loki knows that there's an army surplus at the mall. Loki also knows that uh, if you want to go buy a gun at a gun shop, you need a sin. And you're going to have your picture taken and fingerprints. And well, I don't know no, if that's I, something Zero wants to do. I don't need a do. new gun. I don't need a new gun. I just, I've, I've been looking to invest in a silencer. Uh, I still think you're probably going to need a sin to get one. Out of there. Hey, I, Loki can probably do that for you. Loki, Loki I, I can mean, do anything. I I have a buddy who's a metal fabricator. I can just call him. It's not hard to make one. See, Loki just did that. Whoa. Your powers are great and vast. I know, I know. I'm getting stronger every day. <laughs> All right, so we're huffing. Okay. All right, so are you going fully armed? Are you taking your rifle with you? Are you taking your shotgun? Can I, can I can I take my rifle and do like the t- like like a couple of rags over it, like a cloak? Yeah, if you want to. Sure. Okay. And I find a shopping cart and I'm just pushing it as we're going. All right. Flounder, are you taking your shotgun and wearing your mask, or are you uh... wearing my mask? Um... Okay. I'm not taking my shotgun. Okay. All right, off we go. I'm sure Loki is armed as per usual. Yes, with both of my arms. It's a very uneventful uh, journey through the Barrens. Since most of this territory, people know you or have heard of your uh, encampment by now. Yeah, so right. Any squatters that you may have come across along the way are have either gone to join your community or have vacated the area. So it's pretty quiet. Do you want to make perception tests while you uh, travel? Sure. Do I need to clean up these streets like Wyatt again? Is that what you're telling me here? Yeah, because going everywhere and going, Loonstar is the best strategy. It's got like 100% clearance rate, just saying. <laughs> it's pretty... been working so far. It ain't broke no yeah, fix. Yeah, it's pretty successful. Uh, I, exactly. I only got a five. The highest was a five, so. Okay. Uh, highest I got was an eight. It's time to get some new dice. I'd like last session, I didn't roll that well either. Nothing out of the ordinary the whole way. A lovely hour walk through the Barrens. You can get to Sam's garage. Slash bar. Door just opens. Isn't it a bar? Sam's right there. Yeah, and it's like the middle of the day. Sam, hello. How are you? Thank you so much for all of your help the last couple of days. It's been wonderful working with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Kaze here? He told us to meet him here. Oh, yeah, he's back. Fantastic. 
Yeah, just head back that way. Uh, waiting for you. I got Appreciate it. Thank you so yeah, much, buddy. Stuff to do. Yeah. All right. See you later. Bye, Tom. <laughs> he just like walks away, leaves the door open. <laughs> He's in the back, guys. Let's let's go back there. Mm-hmm. I park my my shopping cart somewhere. <laughs> Kaze. Oh, Kaze, where are you, Kaze? Uh, as as I hear them, the 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 shutter front of the garage at the back will just slowly start to roll up, and you just see me standing in a black and silver jacket in front of our souped up uh, murder race car that, uh, with the help of Sam, we have finished augmenting to get ready to go. And uh, I just kind of look out at you guys and go, so I hope this isn't too forward of me, but uh, given the stakes with the Neon Knights here tonight, I figured that we might do with a little bit of branding considering how things go forward. And I start to throw out jackets to everybody that I made. And on the back of the jacket in gold stitch lettering, it says Aesir. And underneath it is a stitched embroidery of Mjolnir with tree roots coming off of the the hammerhead of it. I just figured that, you know... It's the coolest thing I've ever seen! I give Kaze a big hug. Get... Given given the motif we've been going for here, I felt like this was appropriately in line for uh, how how we should handle ourselves going forward to be a little bit more professional. I love it. It's amazing. What what's the wording on it? Uh, it's Aesir. It's A E S I R. I I I posted it in the uh, the Twitch chat because it's the the A bleeds into the E for like how the ah, the phonetic ah. part is done. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you you want to tell the uh, the viewers at home or listeners at home uh, what, yes, for, uh, what exactly uh, it is? Yeah, for the people that may not know, uh, the Aesir is the uh, general title of the pantheon of the reigning Norse gods. Generally, like Odin, Frigga, Thor, and Baldr are the main four associated with it. But they are the the it is the name of the Norse pantheon of gods. So not not counting their. Uh... They're ones who have ascended, like Harvard or any of those. Right, yes. right. Yeah. So, so that is us. We are the Aesir. Imagine like Mount Olympus for Greek gods, but not the same thing. But not, gotcha. not the uh, demigods. I feel for like, the sake of understanding. I feel like right here is the moment that the gold star should go across the screen. Well, I'll be editing that in as soon as we're done with this. So. That's what we're here for, guys. We're here to help educate uh, as well as entertain. Like, yeah. so Hercules Can we apologize? Is it is it uncouth to like change our monikers or otherwise like update them for another <laughs> alias? You can add as many uh, aliases as you would like to have in the shadows. Dope. Like you could have your your team right here know you as zero, but people that you get introduced to from this point on yeah. know you as something else. Yeah, we should That'll we should fine. call dibs because I have one immediately that I I want. It's not Loki, is it? I was like I was like oh zero, look on the inside of your jacket, and on the inside is embroidered Frigga. I already got you covered, big oh. guy. Don't worry about it. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. I, I look away. I look in the inside I'm, of I'm my like, holding back tears. Oh. What's on the inside of my jacket now? That's a good question, Loki. What does it say on the inside of your jacket? <laughs> they never learned to read. <laughs> now, I, I open my jacket and I look on the inside. What's in there? Uh, on the inside of the jacket, it says Loki. And then underneath that in brackets, it says Jotun. And then underneath <laughs> that in brackets, it says Odin? Question <laughs> mark? Oh, he embroidered the question mark. Wow. <laughs> and uh, then on the inside of uh, Flounder's jacket, it says oh. Thor. Ah, uh, oh, oh, why do oh. I get the worst? No- <laughs> he was wanting Balder. Everybody knows that. I, w- I would have taken Balder. 
See? Well, so uh, so so as Flounder says that, I go, oh, and I open the inside of my jacket <laughs> and it says boulder across the inside of my jacket. Fine. Wow, there's layers you of blow the jacket. I'll let you have it. It's what? fine. I just slowly put my put my jacket back. <laughs> Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. You know, you know what, Flounder? If you don't like it, let me know. I can make it's... alterations. We can no, change no, it up. It's fine. No, it's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. I'll just I'll just you know would, I... would would you like to be Heimdall? You could be the keeper of our gate. Uh, Am I the uh, goddess zero... of marriage? Uh, listen, Zero, don't look too much into it. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's better than Harvard. What is Yes, I would not have stuck you with Harvard, my friend. I, I, wow. I respect you more than that. Let's be fair. <laughs> I'm going to reach up and uh, put my hand on Flounder's considerably high and large shoulder and be like, listen, chum, I think it fits great. You're basically the hammer of the group anyway. So when we need a nail hit, who do we call? We call you. It fits. It's great. I think it's a fantastic fit for you, buddy. Fine. I'll take it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not upset. I'll adjust. <laughs> I mean, that was my thinking on it, too, but, you know, it's fine. You know, like I said, hey, if, if you know, we're open to talking it out. I can be sensitive, up. too. I, und- I understand. I understand. Got layers. He's got layers. He's like an ogre. Like an onion. <laughs> All right. Six sides of the coin. Six sides of the coin. Uh, so then after after we get the jacket and everything all uh, devied up and, and ready to go, I kind of just look out and I go, so how many of you have participated in a death race before? Uh, I don't. I don't want to see anybody's hand. No one's hand should go up. To uh, this. What? What okay. is a, a what? So what that's what death race. So that's what I expected. Uh, the results of this were going to be. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a basic rundown of uh, what's going to happen here uh, with the death race uh, because uh, once again, as mentioned, stakes are considerably high for this. So. The death race itself will be a motorcycle race between myself and the chosen representative of the Neon Knights, who will presumably be Galahad, as uh, I am challenging him for ownership of the Knights, uh, as we had previously established. And so uh, we will have myself as a driver, Galahad as a driver, and then we will also be equipped with a uh, co-pilot, if you will, more of a gunner position. Uh, and then I'm going to pull out this vest strap harness and go, Zero, I'm really hoping that you brought your sniper. Don't leave home without it. Fantastic. So you will be strapped backwards to me wearing this harness while we are racing on the lookout for potential obstacles and issues that may arise. Following behind us is going to be Loki and our dear Flounder in the battle wagon. That is why we have had this commission for us. And you'll deal with anybody else that may try to interfere with the race from the Golden Knight side or the Neon Knight side uh, outside of what me and Zero are able to handle on our end while racing. Uh, Again, this will be uh, uh, along the entire outlined border of the Barrens, as that is the area that we are contesting for control of. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, I, I, I have questions. Yes. Um, you said this is a death, death race, right? Fantastic, yes. So, like, you're talking about real, like, death, right? Yes, hopefully not for us. And, and you want me to drive? Uh, that is the plan. Yeah, I have already seen your driving skills in action after we left from the junkyard. You did considerably well in the vehicle, so it made sense to me at the time to put you in charge of our battle wagon. I, um... That was a sort of uh, test, if you will, uh, a, a, a test drive to make sure that you were going to be somebody that I could rely on to make sure that me and Zero were covered. I am... I, I, um, I... <clears throat> Uh, uh, of of course of course Uh, this shouldn't be a problem for Loki whatsoever everything will be just fine Flounder are you prepared to go into battle you're driving me (laughs) indeed oh uh is there another option um not 
not saying that he's not capable. I just, you know, I, his his skills with a pistol as a, you know, in the shotgun position would be much more valuable. Oh well, okay, you're sweating a lot. Well, I, I you okay. I, I I brought this too because I figured that it might be more useful given the scenario than the shotgun you're used to, and I pull out the uh, adjusted pistol that we took off of the leader of the red hot nukes in the junkyard and, and give it to flounder and go here. So now you have a pistol that'll be ready for you. I've been holding on to this because I knew that we needed somebody that would be a, a good gunner. And, you know, I know that you're good at it. So I, I, mean, I had I, this ready for you. I'm really bad with pistols, but I'll try. You know, we're all stepping out of our comfort zones, except Loki. He's a speed racer. I am very comfortable right now. I am the most comfortable I've ever been, ever. You are Chris. seriously sweating. What is going on? Is it hot outside? What's going on here? Well, it's no, it's a just, crisp January what, day. But just, when, just, he, when he says that, like, I visibly, like, snap and stop sweating instantly. <laughs> like, you do, like, literally see, like, my pores, like, start to suck the sweat back in. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I take Flounder around to the back of the truck and I'm like, look, I know that Loki isn't the best choice for driver, but Amazing's not here right now. And I know that he can drive. So I think it's going to be okay. I would much rather have you manning the armaments than having well, to drive as well. And I'm going to open the back flap of the truck. And on one side, uh, near one of the side panels, I, I push this or I, I turn the switch and the panel like opens. So it's like a little like opening to be able to shoot out of, but still like moderately protected around it. And then I have a shotgun leaning up next to it. And I went, I didn't know if you were going to bring yours. So I wanted to make sure that you'd have this available as well for you. And then on the other side of the panel is a duffel bag. And I go, open those, open this when the time is right. You'll know when the time is right. How will I know when the time is right? You'll know when the time is right. I trust your judgment. Wait, my ex-girlfriend said that same thing, and I I, I still don't know when the time is right. <laughs> well, now is the time to prove both of us right. Oh, no. <laughs> Flounder's just going to sit there like in utter despair like looking at the bag and the shotgun and the bag and the shotgun like not knowing and then as as he's having his existential crisis i'm gonna walk up to loki and give him the keys for the wagon and just go it's an automatic transmission so you don't have anything to worry about you just push the gas push the brake when you need it it's been outfitted and there's a roll cage mounted into the driver area so worst case scenario you should be okay. I'm assuming Flounder's going to be okay in the back. He seems pretty tough and strong. And it's mostly reinforced steel in the back anyway. I don't think that there's going to be an issue. Not that I think you're going to crash at all. Because you're going you're gonna to handle this just fine. I, it's I already definitely know. not going to happen. It's absolutely so, not going to happen. So here's the whole layout of your uh, battle wagon. You have the truck that has been re-outfitted, right? It's painted silver and black. It has a roll cage now uh, in the cab, right? You've got the automatic, like he's saying, but there are other buttons that have been installed onto the dashboard. The back of the truck, the bed has been re redone, and it now supports the troll size. And basically, it's created kind of like castle walls in the back that have slats that he can open and close to either shoot out of or toss something through. Okay. Other than that, the top of the back is open. Okay, so it's almost like an open air. Like, can he is is it? Can he stand up and look over the top? If he wanted to, if he wanted to, yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. Or we what, made what sure buttons? that it wasn't that tall. It, it wasn't too <laughs> tall that it was gonna like break him, so he could so. use it to look out and scout the area. So you have you have four buttons. Okay. All right. <clears throat> two of them are red, and then the other two, uh, one is blue and one is yellow. Do they have labels on them? They do not have labels on them. Kaze, what are these? What are these things right here? These are not, this is new. This is not normal. <laughs> All right. So the, uh, the two red buttons are going to be two 
one time use bursts of nitrous. So if you hit it, you're going to take off. So if you need to ram another vehicle to get it out of the way or, you know, also on the on the very front of where the hood is, there's like a reinforced plate. So it's, it's like a slight plow design to be yeah. able to knock stuff out of the way. But so, it doesn't drag the, the ground like a plow would. It's right. lifted it's, higher. So it's like yep. a cow catcher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So the two red buttons are going to be one time <laughs> use nitrous bursts uh, that, you know, in case, in case of emergency uh, to get things out of the way, make sure that you use it when needed. Uh, the yellow button is going to be a, uh, once again, all of these are one time use because of the way that, uh, you know, we had to design an account for everything. Don't have any type of refillable storage in that sense. Uh, the yellow button is going to be a oil slick dispenser that is also uh, going to put out uh, my personal mix of oil uh, that is actually oil that has been slightly mixed with a kerosene base. Uh, so it will be highly flammable should the need arise. And the uh, blue button uh, will drop uh, one flashbang behind you. So again, if in pursuit or being followed by enemy vehicles, you can drop that in order to try to disorient them and possibly cause them to crash or be lost. Uh, it's, it's not really a flashbang so much as it's like a giant uh, like light, like a, like a big UV strobe essentially that's attached to the back. So when you hit it, it'll charge into the bulb and then it'll just go boom and it'll flash pop really quick and it'll it'll affect anybody that's behind the vehicle. So best use if we go through a tunnel or something like that is what you're telling me. Yes, that could be that could be good. Uh, or also the oil slick could also be used there because then you could create, you know, a nice little firewall for yourself. Mm, fantastic. Uh, to, uh, to, to possibly block pursuers. But yes, yeah, so uh, so that should be every button. And again, only one time use, I will leave them to your discretion of when best used. Excellent. Well, it sounds like that's uh, that's pretty much all we need to know. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for this this death race that I'm totally going to crush with my driving? I'm completely confident in that statement. 100 percent as, yeah. as as yeah. as Loki's getting everybody pumped up around the car, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the bar real quick so I can talk to Sam. Yeah, he's okay. wiping the sweat grease off his face, just drinking something out of a tall glass. Leaned up against the bar, looks like he's half asleep. Uh, okay, and then I'm just, hey, Sam, once again, man. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> you know, you know, I appreciate how much help uh, you've given us over the course of getting everything ready here, and have always uh -huh. been a good yeah. friend. And I, 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 I slide a cred stick to him that has 5,000 credit, 5,000 new yen on it and just go, oh, this is for all the help. It's great. I always Thank appreciate God. you. And, uh, you know, the other thing that we talked about, should something happen this evening, uh, I need you to get in contact with Sue for me over at Nova Hot Numbers and just let her know. But yeah, no, hey, don't talk like that. You're going to knock him dead, kid. <laughs> And then, and then, as he says that, I I open the other side of of my jacket, and on the other side of my jacket, I just have eight check marks in, and I just go, "Don't worry, I'm adding another one tonight." And then uh, we do the uh, the 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 uh, commando, or the uh, sorry, the 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 predator, you know, the big <laughs> high five. <laughs> And, and then and then I go back out to the bike and I walk up to zero and I'm just like, all right, zero. You ready? So is this like a Bjorn? Uh yeah. So, like so, one of those so think of it like like it's it's a it's essentially like a vest with like a a a high tension cable connected to another vest. So I'll have oh. it on and then it, the the cables on my back connecting to the back of your vest but that way you're going to be sitting reverse so you're going to be facing out as wow. i'm facing forward but if one of us falls out the other one's going with uh that shouldn't be an issue <laughs> cross that bridge when we get to it. just wanted to make sure i understood it's 100 uh, not going to happen exactly. uh, yeah, with, yeah. with me behind you guys covering your six you should have clear sailing the whole way 
and then as as I get done explaining the vest to him, I go over and uh, next to where the headlight is on on my bike, I flip a switch, and all of a sudden it just starts to assemble more pieces out onto it to get into death race mode. <laughs> So on the front, over the front area, it rounds more to be like a more uniform piece at the front that also covers the the most of the front tire to encase it. Uh, the back comes up and then also has like a, a small drop down to cover the back area tire as well. And then out of the back sides, it has these two additional foot pegs with strap coverings that come out for zero to hook his feet into for when we're driving and see all right cool <clears throat> like i said this isn't my first death race so do we have like a scheduled death race what, what's uh yeah so then the i'm plans? gonna pull out the cell phone that we took off of the the neon knights back yeah. when uh when, when we blew them up uh-huh. and uh call the 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 number again uh that was labeled <clears throat> for galahad sure uh, so you call the number, uh, rings, rings, trumpet noise. This is Galahad. Galahad, this is Kaze. Of the, ah, the upstart. Yes, of the oh. Aesir. We have the, the, the inevitable time of clash has finally come. I assume that you know the starting location. We're ready to meet your terms, and I am prepared to put you completely to shame. Uh, it'll be a shame to have such a formidable foe go down in glorious flames in front of me, but a sight nonetheless I look forward to. I will send you the location of the meeting. I expect you there promptly after the sun has dipped below the horizon. Sounds good. Enjoy the sunset, as it'll be the last one that you lay eyes on in this realm. Make sure your affairs are in order, chum. I just hang up on him. I was like, shit, I didn't have another comeback. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, you guys have about four and a half hours before sunset. What do you want to do? It's midday. Um, so Loki, you were talking about like getting a silencer. A little old me. I, we do we do have a yeah, car now. I'll, <laughs> I'll call I'll call my buddy and see if it's it's if we can do something like that. <clears throat> it shouldn't be hard to make one. They're not hard to make, but yeah. Uh, I'm gonna add, I'm I'm gonna ask Zero if he wants to just go for a quick test spin to get a feel for uh, how the, the harness system is going to work. I was just about to, to, to say, like, uh, I, w- I would like to drive around in the van in the yeah. meantime to kind of like just get a feel for the car. All right. So first we'll do uh, Flounder is making a call to his his friend, Sebastian. Yep. All wow. Right, so. Wow. Of course. <laughs> of course his name is Sebastian. <laughs> his, his wife's name is Ariel, if you're really curious. <laughs> just, just wait. Like when he gets a love interest, it's going to be Ursula. Oh, well, first now. he's gonna have to win the approval of, of her evil stepbrothers, Floatsum and Jetsum, <laughs> and her dad, Triton. Wow, okay, anyway, uh, the phone will ring. <laughs> Sebastian picks up. Ah, hello again, old friend. What can I help you with this time? Hey, Seb, I had a, I had a job for you. Uh, if you're if you're willing, uh, I can spare some free time here and there. What what do you need this time? Another mask? Did you already go through the one that I gave you? Oh no, that's that's not going anywhere. Um, I need a silencer, uh, not well or a suppressor. Probably not going to be able to get a full silencer, but a suppressor for what's the model type of? Uh, Remington 950. Of a Remington 950, if you can possibly make me one. Um, just something to take a little bit of pressure off and uh, make it a bit better in the long range. Higher grade materials so it lasts longer than five shots? Yeah, that'd be great. I'll see what I can come up with. Uh, how soon do you need it by? As soon as you can get it. 
I'll pay you extra if you can. Oh, you don't have to. You don't have to pay me. You know uh, we're on good standings. Uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. It shouldn't take me more than. Ooh. I can have something whipped up for you in the next couple of days. Okay. And uh, yeah, just let me know cost and materials, and I'll I'll get you squared away. All right, I'll let you know. Uh, it'll probably be dropped off at the usual location. Sounds good. Thanks, man. Anytime. All right, Mike. While that phone call is going on, mm-hmm. Zero is like looking through his contact list, and he's hearing all these friendly conversations, <laughs> and he like flips through to uh to midnight uh-huh. and to Saint, uh-huh. and then he thinks about calling them. And then he's like, nah, no, nah. we're, we're not that close. Oh, wow. All right. Um, so Kaze and Zero are going to hop on the bike and do a couple test runs to make sure everything works. And Loki's in the wagon. At the same time, Loki's going to do some test driving. <laughs> Uh, Loki, are you wanting to try and do some evasive maneuvers in the van or just kind of getting a feel for it? Uh, yeah, I would like to like hit some corners and try to like, you know, mm-hmm. do some, some e-brake pulls and stuff that I've seen in like sure. trids, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm reaching back into my extensive knowledge uh-huh. of, uh, you know, um, uh, Steve McQueen, Lo- the classic Loki. tridios. Loki has watched all 37 installments of the Fast and the Furious franchise. I have, I have. Eagerly prepared for this. Uh, Some of them I've even seen twice. He's a real fan of that um, that Tokyo Drift one. I mean, Tokyo who Drift. isn't? It's the best one. That was the best one. Like. <laughs> Kyoto Drift. Yeah, uh, Kyoto Drift. That's what it is. Yes, yes Kyoto Drift. There you go. Are we talking new, about the one new, that was in the 2000s or the one Tokyo. that was in space? New Tokyo. Uh, Neo, Neo Tokyo Drift. Neo, Neo Tokyo, Tokyo Drift. Drift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you don't have drive skill, correct? I do not. Excellent. Can you please roll me your quickness mm-hmm. at target number five? Nine. Three successes. Yeah. Nine. There you go. Yeah. So you're able to pull off the e-brake turn. You're feeling pretty good. You got, got that slide going good uh it's a good thing that nobody's shooting at you the turns are a little wide but you know okay but uh like i feel like like i have a good feel for the accelerator the brake like i can hit some sharp corners mm-hmm. like take take turns pretty well uh yep. can i can i take some more maneuvers like again real quick just to get a little bit of a better feel for it like if yeah. i still have time okay. yeah you can spend the last little bit of time continuing to practice okay uh still three successes highest was a seven okay you feel pretty confident. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully this helps me later. This practice will like help me later in my moment of need. Mm-hmm. Ho- hopefully. <clears throat> <clears throat> I said, help me <clears throat> in my moment of need. <clears throat> uh huh. Yeah, no, I I heard you. We'll see how that moment comes up. Does anybody want to do anything else? Other than get a feel for the vehicles and call some contacts. I might need to make another character sheet. (laughs) Uh, Well, it all depends on how much you trust your driver. I know I trust my gunner implicitly. Oh, I mean, like you said, he might need to make another character sheet. So, (laughs) I feel like it worse comes to worse and it flips like Flounder can do some tuck and roll stuff. The only flips that's going to happen is if I do like an intentional barrel roll or like a loop de loop, you know, uh, all oh, those, no. those things could happen, but it's going to be because I choose to make them happen. I'm going to manifest them with my I, expert. I, I'm like whispering skills. over my shoulder to Takazi. I'm like, he went from underconfident to arrogant real quick. I'm a little worried. You know, I would rather have him be arrogant than unsure, to be perfectly honest with you. I'd, I'd rather him be arrogant than dead, so this is pretty Yeah, good. I think that that's a good indicator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to be okay. okay. This, is, uh, this is fine. As, as we're about to head out as well, I just uh, I go, one more thing. As is the tradition of death racing, 
uh, none of you are to try to kill the other driver of the enemy team. What? So... Because if we because if we could just shoot him and kill him while we're mm. driving, we could just do that right at the beginning. That was my plan. That defeats the purpose of a death race. So I don't That's... I don't understand what our our purpose is. If nobody's supposed to mess with you and nobody's supposed to mess with him, then why do you, oh, no. you guys not just oh, like no. race and get away with it? Like... Oh no, you can't kill the driver, but you can take out the vehicle. Oh, so you can still take out the bike. You're just not allowed to implicitly shoot Galahad in the head. That means we will lose. But if I were to, I don't know, gently nudge the back of his bike and he were to wipe out and then I run him over on complete accident, that would be fine? Uh, you know, that's a bit of a gray area within the death race community. Is there like some kind of like unified rules system or like a death race league? Is there a judge like, involved? Yeah, like, uh, there is a there is a rule system. However, uh, it's a spoken rule system. We don't have like a formal handbook. You know, I can't. It's called a really death race. Why is it so complicated? Because... Look, if you want if you want rules, go to combat biking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you want rules, go check out the combat bikes. They got a whole li- list of limitations. But what I'm saying is at some point during this race, there will probably be five to six enemy Neon Knights riders on bikes that will be trying to take us out. And when that happens, I go ham. You can kill okay. them to your heart's content. You can take all of them out. That is why you are here to back me up and support me. But the driver themselves is not allowed to be implicitly killed. I wonder what the force of a traveling troll-sized kukri would be at full speed. Yikes. Time for science. Discovery. For science. <laughs> Let me go check. Science. I'm going to go do the math real quick. <laughs> well, shall we Shall we away, gentlemen? Let's get this show on the road, if you will. Mm-hmm. So when are we getting, like, Viking-esque attire, like, like horns and stuff? I was thinking of getting, like, a frig wig. You know, I'm pretty bald. I don't know. I'm keeping. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Uh huh. No, I, I got it. Next, you'll be putting on, you know, the uh, the masks to look like I, the person. I mean, and then you're robbing hey, not banks. For nothing. You, you know. I, well, I mean, hey, you know, if it pays. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> As night begins to fall, uh, you head off to the location that Galahad provided you. It's deeper into the Barrens. When the lights go down. Uh, you can, when you get there, the large group of the Neon Knights are there. You can see there are at least uh, 14 other bikes that are decked out with the neon accoutrement on the side and a lot of them have these big mohawks that'll come up through their helmets uh they're all cheering and waving glow sticks back and forth as, while, they, as while they're I, cheering and waving i'll roll out my window and just pageant wave at yeah, the <laughs> yeah. yeah. 100 percent. i think they're waving for me and cheering as, for me as, wow. as as we roll up, I, 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 I stop at the starting position and I go up to meet with Galahad and then yeah, he uh, he sees your uh, your bike pulling up and so his pulls out from the group. Uh, his is also aptly souped up for death race, almost mirroring what you have. Pulls as, up right next to you, takes off his helmet, cradles it. As as we stand there staring at each other. There's this weird, seemingly from nowhere, spotlight that just appears in between where both of us are standing, staring each other down. And this gigantic robed figure just slowly walks into the spotlight. And then everybody that's surrounding us just instantly falls quiet. Nobody says anything. And then he grabs and throws the cloak off. And it is a large man wearing a black and white striped officiant's jersey with black pants who goes, It is me, Mr. Referee! And as is tradition, 
will be the official officiant of the death race, uh, who then also deploys his drone that will be following us over the course of the death race to make sure that no cheating occurs. And, and as Mr. Referee, I will go over the rules very quickly. The rules for the death race include one, driver on driver violence is prohibited. Your companion that is assisting you may only, is the only one that may interfere with the opponent's vehicle. You may not attack the driver directly. Any outside interference cannot attack the driver directly. Obstacles that should suddenly appear along the race are valid and legal. You race at your own peril. First one across the finish line in one piece or being the only one remaining in the race is the winner. As we only have two contestants here for this evening. It will be whoever crosses the finish line or whoever wipes out first. The other is the winner. I, of course, will be following for everybody watching on my pirated Trid channel. Make sure to check out Mr. Referee, giving you all of the great hijinks and illegal races happening in the Barrens all the time, every time. Trid.tv forward slash Mr. Referee. <laughs> uh, he has a big souped up drone that is putting the spotlight on him um, you know those TTV links <laughs> you gotta watch out for him sometimes uh, he has the starting line sprayed out with a white spray paint on the, on the ground gentlemen you'll uh Pull your vehicles up for quick inspection before we set off. We will start the race in T minus 30 minutes. All right, I'm going to do a quick comm check. Comms are working. Everybody, everybody good? Kaze, Zero, Founder, everybody got good comms? I'm here. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Comms are all good. Uh, you see like half of the group that came with the Neon Knights just kind of mysteriously rolls out away from the place. Uh, I'm sure that they're just going home to watch the stream. They don't want to miss any of the action. Yeah, and what better way than to watch on Mr. Referee? <laughs> While we're sitting there for the 30 minutes, am I able to like look at the bike and just like kind of determine where a weak spot would be if it got shot for whatever reason? You could try. Um, examining it, it looks remarkably similar to the one that you're on. I mean, if you sh obviously, if you get a bullet through the engine block, it's it's game over. Uh, but any of the other like weak joint areas look like they've been reinforced. Dope. Or they have an armor piece that has been placed over them. So while uh, while they've done that for more protection, that means they've probably sacrificed speed, as have you. Roger that. Also, is is his um, his second in command for the race? Is he also tethered? Uh, doesn't look like he's tethered. Oh wow! Can we shoot the second in command? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, you can shoot at him. You don't but miss. if you miss and hit the driver, <laughs> right. then you lose. Okay. So uh, as that's as, that's the downside of shooting at the the, uh, the bike or the driver, the helper, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. whoever's helping, as, because as, they could dodge and you miss. As we're in the the period before we start, I walk up to uh, Galahad mm -hmm. and just kind of go so. I know that we had previously discussed what my terms for this set death race were, but uh, a little unclear on what you're wanting out of all of this. <sighs> That's right, you wanted us to vacate the territory that we're 
making inroads on. No, no. I wanted you to vacate the territory. Ah, I see. Now, what should happen to the rest of the Neon Knights will be made clear after I win this death race. <laughs> you mean if you win this death race? I know what I said. Hmm. When I win this death race, I will have you kindly cease and desist all your operations against us. You will allow us inroads uh, into the territory that we uh, are pressing on. And then uh, you will also become uh, our eyes and ears as we move deeper in to that Redmond area. All right. I agree to the terms. We do like the the, the forearm clasp oh, yeah. handshake. All right. And then I walk up to zero. Zero. Doing all right? You feeling okay? You need some Taco Temple before we start? How are you feeling, BK? Oh, no. I, I, I Right before we fight, that's a bad idea. I get really gassy. Um, also, just messing with my equilibrium a little bit when I'm aiming. I'm already going to be probably shooting at moving targets anyway. <laughs> We'll celebrate with Taco Temple after. Okay. Uh, and then I, I go up to Loki. Everything feeling all right? I, I saw you taking it out for a test run a bit earlier. How, how, how are you feeling? I think I have a good handle on it, chum. I believe I can I can successfully navigate the streets of the Barrens with this, this wonderful vehicle you provided for me and, uh, and do my job to help you do yours. Okay, fantastic. And then I go, uh, just for a little security measure in case you need it as well, and I, I take a grenade out and I just put it on the seat next to him in the driver's side and just go pull the pin, toss it out the window, forget about it. I'm actually going to put it in the cup holder because I don't want it rolling around. Yeah, that's a smart idea. That's why smart. I left the cup smart. holder in there. I, I didn't, <laughs> that's why That's I, why there I, are cup holders. It's actually, yeah. if, if you notice, the, the cup holders are actually two different sizes. One is for a cup. The other one is actually grenade sized, uh, just to make sure that it could gently cradle it for you. Big brain Kaze over here. All right. Uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll go up to Flounder. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that I left enough space back here that uh, you'll have room to move around and should be pretty well fortified. So... If you lose, mm -hmm. I'm killing him, right? Uh, you know, if we get to that bridge, we we could cross it then. Uh, there are some secondary measures uh, in place that uh -oh. should a battle of honor be necessary. Uh, I know that I have a chosen champion available here for us. I just don't want there to be hesitation, because if other people are going to be showing up on the scene... I want to make sure that uh, it goes quickly. I don't mind fighting in Battle of Honor. In fact, I'd I'd much rather do that. But uh, just well, so we're on the same page. That shall be our plan B. Should everything go uh, uh, go awry, but I'm feeling pretty good here. Uh, I've I've heard of Sir Galahad's abilities before. He's an okay death racer. I'm I'm not very concerned. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I'll go and get set up with zero and get ready. All right. You roll up to the starting line. Mr. Referee is there and ready and waiting. Gentlemen, engines on. Are you ready? Points at Kaze. Are you ready? Points at Galahad. Race! Go ahead and uh, give me some bike skill to take off here. Okay. Uh, we're just going with highest number? Yep. Uh, 16. Wow. So uh, you definitely get a commanding head start here. Uh, as Galhad spun his back wheel a little bit, 
So you are able to get faster off the starting block and start to take off on the route. Uh, he's coming up behind you. Uh, Loki and Flounder, are you guys starting up the battle wagon going after them, or are you waiting a little bit? I mean, yeah, I'm going to try to keep Kaze, like, in my sights here. Okay. Uh, so you real take quick, off after him. Real quick question. Yeah. Um, when rolling for skills, mm -hmm. do I just roll the number equal to the skill that I have, or do I add that in with the pool that it's based off of? No, you're just going to roll the skill, the number that you have in the skill. So if you have bike six, you'll roll six dice. Okay, gotcha. All right. Uh, you're going along. It's just regular kind of chopped up road because you're out in the barrens. So it hasn't really been treated or taken care of. It's like driving here at home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so 20 miles an hour is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you're going to start to come up to your first obstacles, it looks like some uh, burning tires have been placed in the road in big piles here and there that you'll have to weave through. Give yep. me your bike skill again. Uh, 21. You're watching Kaze just weave through this like he built this track himself. We're going for potato tonight, boys. We're going for <laughs> potato tonight. <laughs> Meanwhile, Galahad will weave. He'll sort of hit one, one pile, uh, back tire up on one. He's not quite keeping pace uh, with Kaze and Zero. You guys will go on for a, a, about another mile and a half. And then, uh, Kaze, as you're going Zero, you can see two other bikes have started to come out onto the track from opposite uh... sides, uh, from side streets. Okay. They're coming onto the road, trying to match speed with you. Uh, am I clear to shoot at them now, or should we wait? It's up to you. You got one coming on each side. Okay, so I'm going to fire, if that's the case. Sure. As long as I'm not shooting the driver, right? We're all good. Oh, uh, you can't goes. shoot Galahad. Yeah, yeah. But these oh. guys. Yeah, these Galahad, guys are yes. good. Fair these game. Guys okay, are cool, clear. cool. Are they are they even like even pace with each other? Uh, no, one is coming up faster than the other. Okay, I'm gonna shoot the one that's uh, coming up faster. Are you shooting the driver? Are you shooting the bike? What are you What are you gonna shooting shoot? Shooting the driver. Okay, you take a shot from the back of uh, the motorcycle that you're attached to Kaze with, and you happen to shoot them right in the neck, Ooh. and you see he immediately lets off with one hand, instinctively goes to grab, and as he does, it jerks the cycle to the side, and you watch it flip end over end. Um, battle wagon driver, please make me an evasive driving test to avoid the flipping oh, no. bike. Oh no. Able to skirt right out of the way as it becomes flaming wreckage spiraling back past you. Flounder, you can almost feel some of the heat of the fire through one of the open slats in the back. Nice. The other one is still coming up strong. Uh, I'm going to He's going to call it out. I'm going to be a Flounder, we got a we got a tango at 2 o'clock. Time to shoot. All right, you're going to shoot from the Yep. Yep, from the side. All right. Okay. Flounder's shot misses. Uh, the driver hits the accelerator and starts to move past you, Loki. Uh, can I, Do you can want I, to move into his uh, way? Yeah, or... <laughs> okay. Um, all right. We'll do opposed tests here. Uh, you can swerve into his way as I almost completely botched that ruffle. Uh, so you cut into it and he has to hit the brakes really fast and he ends up behind you. He doesn't wreck, but he's now traveling behind you. Now, can I slam the brakes on? Yeah. Make, uh, you can hit the brakes. He has to make a... Found it. Brace for impact. 
He has to make a drive test to try to avoid. Uh oh. Okay. You slam on the brakes. You hear. You hear the screeching of rubber, and then <laughs> cuts around you. Ends up back in front of you. All right. Hit the gas. Get back on the comms. Okay. Zero, zero. I missed him. He's on the way. I'm coming up behind him. He's come, coming up strong. Zero, you're seeing where the the Aesir battle wagon hit the brakes really hard. You see the pop, the back end almost pop up a little bit, and then the neon knight swerves around the outside of it, coming uh, up uh, to be in front, uh, and they're hitting hitting the gas to try to catch up with you. Kazek, okay. you made me another bike test, please, going through here, as Galahad also has to. Oh, finally, he's doing something. Uh, 11. All right. Galahad is actually going to start to catch up and almost be neck and neck with you. Yep. As this other Neon Knight is making his way up to try to get on alongside you on the other side. Um, okay, Zero, so... Zero, do you want to do anything to the other bike before it gets there? Yes, I was wondering... Okay, so from my understanding of the front of the battle wagon, mm -hmm. if it's hitting something, it's going to go at... It's going to knock it out of the way? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to fire at it. Um, if it's like... Is it like... Is it like us and then bike guy and then um battle wagon so so it's you you and and Kaze. the other bike is okay coming up like here and then the battle wagon is back here gotcha okay i'm gonna aim and uh try and shoot is that uh, are the tires reinforced uh they might be you can't tell i'm just gonna shoot the guy guys are not as reinforced as tires are. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make that guess all right he's going to he saw what you did to the last one all right, he's doing like a, a jink maneuver as he's coming up to you, which is going to make your target number harder since he's bobbing and weaving. Uh, so your target number to hit him now is now um, nine. You hit him in the chest and it definitely causes him to uh, flinch a little bit. He has to make a drive test to... He successfully retains control of the bike. What a badass. But now he has to make another test to not get rammed out of the way by the battle wagon that's coming up behind him. Of which he fails. Ooh, let's go. You watch the cow catcher of the front of the battle wagon snag the back wheel and it whips the bike around the side of it, pinwheeling it off the side. Flounder, you hear the bike smack into the reinforced wall on the side, kind of with a crunch, and then... You hear wreckage rolling off of the back. So cool. Okay, he's probably like, <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> <laughs> All right, after the, tra uh, the tire fires that you've had to avoid and now avoiding two, the bike's coming up on you. You're still neck and neck in the race. Uh, the next obstacle that you're coming up on is there have been concrete barricades that have been pulled out on to the road uh, that you'll need to swerve through. <laughs> so give me another bike test, please. Uh, Galahad doesn't roll as well as you, but he is still making his way through. You kind of separate a little bit, going different directions through the barricades. Uh, Loki, can you please roll me a drive test? To get through these barricades, your target number is six. He'll hit a couple, and you'll just <laughs> burst through the concrete <laughs> with the uh, front end. It does take some damage, but you're able to power through. <laughs> Kaze, you are still in the lead uh, when our next round of interlopers pulls in onto the scene. Uh Real quick, as as we get through the barricades on the comms, I just go, uh, Loki. If you end up pressing any of those buttons, give us a shout out on the on the comms and let us know when you use them. Roger that. Ten four over now. There's so much jargon. 
Flounder, with your position in the back, you can see that one of the knights that's pulled out uh, onto join the race actually has a Molotov in his hand, and it looks like he's going to try and throw it uh, up into the bed of your battle wagon. Yeah, shoot him. Fire away, sir. So he took the hit, and he was fine. Then the force of the shot from the shotgun <laughs> causes him to fly backwards off the bike. Yeah. Ooh, he has to roll quickness dropping the Molotov on his bike as he flies off of it. You hear kind of a sick crunch as you watch his legs twist in weird angles. Uh, and he rolls back on the street as his bike is now a flaming wreck that goes forward a little bit, continuing the momentum, and then hits a concrete divider and explodes. Yeah, all planned. 100%. See that, Loki? You see what I did there? No, I was watching the road, but it sounded amazing. Yeah. I have I have great aim, what can I say? Almost like you really laid the hammer down on that one. Oh. On the comms you hear, oh. oh well, I definitely slugged it in there. <laughs> you hit the nail right on the head, chum. Mm. This metaphor is getting away from me. Should I shoot the other guys? <laughs> a question um, for Galahad. The terrain around us, I'm wondering if mm -hmm. there's anything I could shoot above them, like on their way to like kind of mm -hmm. like put something in their path. So as you're doing that, if you do, a, you can make a quick glance over your shoulder and roll me a perception test, please. We'll do this as uh, as that happens. 14 was my highest one success. So you're coming up to what looks like some power lines that you might be able to shoot to have them fall under the road. Mm, but OK, because I'm also thinking I could do that. Uh -huh. These guys have already shown that they're pretty deft maneuverists. And they also, have been keeping would, up with your maneuvering so far. That would get in the way of our vehicles as well. That would also get in the way of mm. your battle wagon. Okay, so I'm on the comms like, hey, should I just keep focusing on the the jabronis or, or what are we? What's our what's our plan here? Are you talking? You're talking to me? Or just in I'm general? talking on the comms to, to everybody. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, chum. Okay. Um, is there someone to shoot at? No, uh, okay. but I'm, I need a uh, bike test from Kaze. Uh, you're looking for target number seven. Okay. As you hear zero, you can with your enhanced hearing, you can hear a shot ring out, and it hits one of the armored coverings of the wheels of the bike. Oh, snap. Uh, yeah, I got it. The highest was an 11. I got two successes. The right. highest was an 11. Sweet. You're able to maintain control, but you definitely feel a little jerk in the uh, in the front of the bike. As you definitely hear something <laughs> off of the uh, wheel covering. Uh, on the comms, I... But you didn't, you didn't see anything. Yeah, on the comms, I just yell out. It seems like we may have some interference from uh, snipers taking shots at him. Uh, Zero, can you give me a scan of the surrounding area and see if you see anybody held up in buildings or anything that may be shooting at us? Yeah, with my hearing ampl amplification and vision magnification, am I able to... You can roll me a perception test to see if you see anything. I can certainly do that. Can I add anything to that? Uh... Use combat pool for my eyes. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> no. It's just based off perception. Alright, that's fine. What's my target number? Or do I have uh, a target with, number? With, it's just an open test. Oh, open test. Yeah. So it's your highest roll? 11. Okay. Uh, you don't notice anything immediately. You are going pretty fast as well. So, with your knowledge from being a trained sniper, you know that they only have that one shot to wait at that precise moment. 
So if it didn't get you there, you don't you shouldn't have to worry about them. Unless they have like other ones set up along the way. Unless they have more set up along the way, but you'd have to be looking for that as you get there. That's fair. And you know how difficult that can be since that is your profession. Right. Also you're turned around backwards, which I'm sure doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah, so you're seeing like the after effects. No, that's fair. Okay, so I'm just basically just um racing in the moment I see another bike, I'm shooting at him. Gotcha. All right. Um, let me ask you this. Can can I, as a person behind them looking forward, I don't have any like vision magnification, but can I be scanning like, you know, I don't know, overpasses and stuff like that as we start to approach to, to yeah. call shots out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, make me a perception test because you're about to get to one of those overpasses. Okay. Uh, you'll spot three or four guys that look like they've taken spots on an overpass that you're approaching, and they all have something in their hand that look like they're getting ready to throw uh, as you approach. And I'm just going to call out uh, three to four tangos, 12 o'clock, holding explosives. Am I Zero able can't to really see them? turn around. Dang. Man, you're, you're anchored to the back. Elevated positions. We really need hot potato right now. We really do. So uh, it looks like you're going to have to rely on good old Kaze's skill with a bike to avoid this raining fire of death. I believe. But at least he knows ahead, what's up. It's get... not going to be a surprise now. It's a good thing, right? Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have to roll reaction. He knows it's coming, so that's why he gets to roll his skill right away. Nice. You weave around. Uh, it causes you to lose some speed, which allows Galahad to get ahead of you a little bit, but you avoid taking any direct hit as Molotovs rain down on you uh, from the overpass. Look, you don't have to do a maneuver through them because they're they're all aiming more at uh, Kaze being in the lead. So you just kind of run over the burning fire <laughs> as you're going forward. As you do. Like you do. All right, we've got two more obstacle sections, and that will almost be the end of this race. So, Kaze, please give me a, uh, another bike test as you go through this next obstacle spot, which looks like uh, this part of the course they have uh, dumped some kind of slick on the road well uh, you're gonna lose ground as Galahad pulls ahead you don't wipe out uh, but you do lose some speed okay Loki you're gonna see two bike two more bikes pop up onto the track after this section and it looks like both of them are going faster than they normally would be able to. Faster than they would normally would be able to, huh? Yeah. Okay, so like they're they're going pretty fast. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it out. Uh, uh, two tangos at a high rate of speed. I'm gonna have to punch it. Zero, you can see them coming up there. They are moving very fast, faster they, than, than the other so ones. I'm, are they? Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match the red button. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, hang, hang on, Flounder. Grab onto something. And then. All right. Uh, roll me a drive test, please. All right, so they're coming up and starting to blow past you. You hit the red button. You jerk back into your seat as your nitrous hits, and you're able to keep pace with them. Did you want to try and pull a maneuver to, uh, do either of you in the battle wagon want to do anything? Uh, I can't, I can't pass them, can I? No, you're keeping pace with them. I can shoot them. Uh, all right, hold yeah. on, hold on. Uh, can I, I, I'm keeping pace with them. Am I, like, next to one of them? Yeah. Can I do, uh... 
can I do facial sculpt to change my face into the referee and roll down the window and shake my finger at the guy? <laughs> if you want to, sure. Yeah, like maybe I can like distract him or something and freak him out a little bit. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll facial sculpt into like the face of the referee and then roll down right. the window and, and wag my finger at him like, <laughs> naughty boy, shame, shame. <laughs> All right. Also, while he's doing this, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, then what? What did you want to do? I want to see if it like distracts him. Like, like forces him to, you know. He he does do a, a double take really quick, but he's still. Okay. As soon as, soon as he does, I see him do a double take. Uh, can I can I roll a drive to like ram him? You swerve over, pushing his bike. Uh, off of the road up onto the sidewalk and he's going too fast to correct anything and he flies right into a building. There is a loud explosion. All right, I'll, I'll call back to Flounder. Flounder, do you, can you take care of the other one? Uh, I'll try and I'll, I'll shoot. Okay. He manages to hang on with one arm. So, Flatter, you take the shot as a, at this other one as the battle wagon swerves off to the one on the left. You take the shot on the one on the right. It hits. He swerves a little bit, kind of maintains control, uh, manages to grab one hand to maintain on the bike as he almost looks like he's going to fly off the back of it. But he has to also hit the brake at the same time. So he disappears from your sight as he has to slow down and you guys are hitting the nitrous and zooming past him. Mm. Zero, from your spot you see the battle wagon swerve into one bike and it goes flying into a building and the other one, the guy almost gets knocked off and then slows down. So we're getting to the last part of the obstacle course of the death race. Kaze, I would need a pretty good roll from you to be able to catch back up and maybe overtake Galahad. Maybe? 17? Woo! That will put you back in the lead. One hot dice. That's all you need. Hot dice. Hot dice. Swapped <laughs> out every dice, but I've kept this one so far. <laughs> In an open test here, yeah, where you're competing against each other, you just need that one to give you the edge. I mean, if all my rolls uh, are going to fail. Guys, you guys are riding up onto them. You're catching back up and starting to overtake. Uh, Galahad is having to do double takes as you're almost right next to him. And that's when... He tries to pull a fast one. He has his subordinate on his back. Leaps to try to get onto your bike. Zero, would you like to roll reaction? Uh, absolutely. All right, absolutely. roll your reaction. You're looking for target number four. Um, three successes. All right, you will get to do something because the guy does not catch you by surprise by him leaping mid -air. from the back. Yeah, he's like midair leaping to your bike. Okay, I'm gonna. What do you want to do? I'm gonna shoot him because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got my note and I play it well. All right, you won't be able to aim for this. This is just like a quick shot. That's fine by me. Um, Pulling a no scope. <laughs> Pulling a no scope. I knew this day would come. I practiced on the. Z box nine thousand. Um, so okay, so I, is combat pool available then? Yeah, combat pool is available because oh. you succeed on your reaction. So your target number for this, since you're sort of being taken by surprise and you're moving so fast, luckily you have smart link. Uh, you're only going to be looking for target number seven. Ah, it doesn't help when I roll almost ones, all ones and twos. It helps me. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Uh, you turn as he leaps from the bike, from his bike to try to get to yours. You turn and fire, and you clip him right out of the air. 
Loki, do you want to pull an evasive maneuver, or else he's going to smack right into your windshield? Um, is this windshield reinforced? Yes. I got wipers. <laughs> yeah, you do. All right, you're uh, you're going along. You watch this guy get shot out of midair at zero, and he smacks yeah, I, I, right I into. I speed up as ab. as I see him in in the air. Ooh. Wow, you definitely hear a crunch, Woo. and then he, and then that noise as he slides <laughs> off. That was beautiful. Slide. I hate the windshield then, fluid. Loki, well, did, did you open a can of soda or something? I opened a can of something, chum. Okay, uh, I'm thirsty. You want to, can I have a drink? Yo, tell me there's a built-in cooler in this battle wagon. <laughs> tell me right now. <laughs> no, you're going to have to wait to, for your celebratory drinks after the race. I'll buy all you right. all the sword, soy beer you want after we win this race, buddy. Deal. All right, final, ra- final roll to cross the finish line. Give me one more bike roll. Get him, champ. 13? It's neck and neck. Oh. But with Galahad's 15. Oh. It looks like he's going to pull ahead. How, do how, you want to try to do anything? How close are we to Galahad right now? Uh, you're a little more than arms arms reach away. Okay. Just slightly more. I, I'm going to basically like let on the let off of the gas on a little just slightly and i uh-huh. want to line myself up to where i'm next to where his rear tire would be and i'm gonna yeah. put my hand on it and try to put the bone spurs through the armor to puncture his back tire okay roll me a cyber implant uh 14. just enough to get through and you can hear that. Now he has to make a bike test. Uh, he manages to keep control of the vehicle, but it allows you to pull ahead of him in speed because he has to avoid fishtailing you'll cross the finish line first there's a bunch of neon knights that are there people are throwing beer cans angrily onto the ground you watch Galahad's skid in past the finish line hit the brake and just let the bike kind of falls. He stands up, picks his helmet up. I I do the uh, <clears throat> I do the uh, Akira power slide as we uh, as we cross the finish line. And uh, then we'll uh, go and uh, reach back and disconnect the hatch between me and, or the, the, the cable between me and Zero and then jump off and then just kind of like grab Zero's hands and jump up and down very excitedly because we won. <laughs> Jumping up and down with the winning. <laughs> We're the champions. We are the champions, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, I'll I'll walk up to uh, Galahad and put put my, my hand out in sportsmanship. Put your hand down in front of your camera so you can focus. Yeah, on. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I think I. I think <laughs> I think go. I messed it up when I uh, did the did the the one. I don't know why it's freaking out now. <laughs> what it is, it can't handle all the awesome right there. There we go. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Hang on, I just have to reset the. There we go. Okay, we should be good. Hell yeah. Okay. I guess you've won. We'll cease our operations this time. Uh, and then, uh, as I, uh, as, as Galahad leaves, uh, I, I, I go to approach the rest of the neon knights that are kind of all around there Uh and go, as of today, I have won the race and I 
have won the Knights. However, you shall no longer be known as the Neon Knights. From this day forward, you are the Valkyrie, our first line of offense and our eyes and ears on the street and you report to me and then as Loki pulls into the battle wagon I go and that man and point to Loki if anything comes up if there's anything that needs to be handled you will t- you will bring it to us but the neon knights are no more and then I I go into the back of the of the of the battle wagon and I pull out this big flag that I made that has a, 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 a woman with a giant one wing with a spear in, in her other arm and unfurl it and just plant it in the ground. Okay. Well, it's going to take a while for them to rebrand. Oh, that's fine. I've already started uh, working on their outfits, so. But, um, uh, Galahad will, uh, bend the knee because he's honorable. Mm. Somewhat. Somewhat honorable. I, I, yeah, he, I trust Galahad for the most part. Uh, he gives you his contact number. Okay. Um, if you want, he can still uh, manage the, the gang while uh, feeding you information. Otherwise, you're going to be getting bombarded with uh, calls. Make him Harvard. Yeah, yeah. For the for 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 the time being, we we will keep him on as uh, we'll 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 see how it goes during the transition process. But I I will keep him on and and allow him to be essentially my second in command of the Valkyrie. Okay. Uh, he zips down the uh, the jack the motorcycle jack he's got reaches into jacket and hands you a jump drive. Ooh. And then I just run over and I plug it into zero when he doesn't know. No, I'm just... (laughs) (laughs) Exterminate! Exterminate! (laughs) Wow. No, no. But I... I, Here, read this for me really quick. (laughs) Hey, what's this say? (laughs) Uh, okay, I'll I'll just I'll put the jump drive in my in my jacket pocket for now. I'll take it with me. Okay. Um, and yeah, so there we go. And then I and then I go up to Loki and I go, I got us more guys. <laughs> Fantastic! I didn't expect this, but this is this is amazing. You are amazing. Everything is amazing. Some real solid combat wagon driving there, my friend. I uh, oh, right. I knew that I. I knew that I put the, 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 the right person in charge. I was completely confident in my abilities the whole time. Never a single shred of doubt at all. Flounder wobbles out of the back of the van. <laughs> <laughs> Flounder, go ahead and roll me your natural body to avoid from vomiting from Loki's driving. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> After wobbling out of the back. Do you want to sit around here while I roll 12 dice? Hold on. <laughs> what am I supposed to be hitting? Uh, target number is uh, uh, five. <laughs> he was whipping around everywhere. <laughs> Only um, moderate damage to your battle wagon. Oh, that's good. That's... Still has a nitrous and the uh, flash and the the oil. So there you go. Five. I have five successes. All right, you you managed to keep it all together. You're just a little queasy. As as I as I see Flounder, uh, like like bracing himself on the back of the wagon as he steps out. I was just like, so. Uh, did you ever go into that bag? No, no, no. I. Uh... It's too busy holding on. I, I, I go and I climb into the back and I grab the duffel bag and I just open it in front of him. And then inside of it is just a six pack of his favorite alcohol of choice. <laughs> and I go, it's just liquid courage, my friend. I hate nothing. And I'll nothing reach in and su- I'll reach in and grab the beer and be like, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> <He's not laughs> he did say open the bag when the time is right and you, you would know what that time is. I think right now is the time, chum. 
Okay. Profound. <laughs> Five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. Well, well I'm just gonna climb on top of a building somewhere and just sit up there and drink. I think that's probably where she. I need to think about my life. I, I think I, I think we should cut it. Yeah. I think we should cut it in um, like a flounder, like uh, you know, jumping up on the building to go drink by himself. <laughs> I do have one okay. other thing for you right. uh, before we do. Uh, your one of your lieutenants will reach out to you. Okay. Location. He's calling me or something. Yeah. So you get a phone call. Loki here. Uh, yeah, it is. It, it's it's Jim. Down down at the community. You remember? Oh yeah, Jim. Jim, how are you, buddy? Um. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong? You can talk to me. Uh, somebody came by and left a package for you. Okay. Did they say what their name uh, was or who it was from or? No, it's a cardboard box and inside it is a fancy looking phone. Hmm. And the box is addressed to the cleaning crew. Interesting. Okay, just uh, keep that thing on ice. Don't don't mess with it. Don't don't let anybody make any yeah, calls. Yeah, they, or... they just told me to let you know that it's here for you. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for reaching out. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, they said we should do that as soon as possible. And they were just here, uh, like five minutes ago. Okay. Um. We'll we'll be back shortly. Uh, just keep keep that thing on on ice. Don't let anybody mess with it, and we'll be back. We'll be back soon. We'll, we'll put it upstairs. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mm, gentlemen, I just got a disturbing phone call. I might have to cut our celebration short, or at least I will. Uh, it seems that there's there's something afoot back in in Jotunheim. Okay. Uh, I must return. Shall I, shall I uh, deliver the vehicle to uh, to Sam's? Uh, you can just take it back to to Jotunheim, and then Ooh. we can we can just honestly we could just keep it there as a as a as need be vehicle for us. Okay. Might be uh, faster than walking for most of you guys at this point. <laughs> indeed, indeed, much appreciated. Also, an excellent vehicle, fantastic tool to have around. A uh, flounder. Flounder, are you there, Flounder? Would you like a ride yeah. back, Flounder? Yes. <laughs> Hop down from your building, like, throw your drinks in the back, and just go back to drinking in the back mm -hmm. of the truck. I, I drive oh, wait, very, very please. calmly and cautiously. Very defensively. <laughs> Almost like you're learning how to drive all over again. <laughs> Zero, are you going back with them in the, the battle wagon, or are you going to hang out with Kaze and go back on the bike. What do you want to do? Um, I think I'm going to go back with with Jotunheim. I want to see the developments going on there and if there's sure. anything going on drone-wise. Okay. Jump back up in the cab. You guys can drive the uh, battle wagon back to your uh, <clears throat> your community establishment. And we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll pick it up next week. On my count, three, two, one, race! Ref here, did that race turn out the way you all thought it would? I tell you, Chummer, I haven't seen moves like that since the I-5 rally. You know, the real winners are our patrons, Sephiroth, Suzy Q, Coop, and Crimson Gecko. Be sure to check out the high-octane action in this episode. Or the photo finish in this episode. Be sure to get your engines revved for next week.